Thank you for attending today's International Public Safety Association webinar sponsored by Safeware. Cellblock FCS, innovative solutions for the safe handling, transportation, and storage of lithium ion batteries. Lithium ion fires are very difficult to control and can have catastrophic results. This webinar will cover safe storage, charging, and handling of lithium ion batteries, protecting personnel from battery fires, basic considerations when shipping lithium ion batteries, controlling a thermal run runaway extinguishing a lithium ion battery fire. Safeware, in partnership with Cellblock Fire Containment Systems, will introduce solutions that alleviate lithium ion safety risks in use by battery recyclers, technology labs, power equipment manufacturers, mining companies, airlines, marine operations, and automotive innovators. The Cellblock FCS product line addresses storage, shipping, containment, and extinguishing. Now, before we get started with the presentation, there are a few housekeeping items I'd like to address with everyone. First, there are a number of handouts that we're providing to you today. You could download those directly from the GoToWebinar control panel under the handout section. Second, this webinar is being recorded and all associate and active, everyone will have access to the recording within 24 hours following this presentation. All attendees will receive a certificate of completion from the International Public Safety Association within 24 hours following today's webinar. And finally, please type in any questions you have using the GoToWebinar control panel and we'll address as many questions as time allows for, uh, at the end of today's discussion. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to our instructor today to get us started. Travis, it's all yours. Thank you, Heather. Really appreciate it today. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining. My name is Travis Ogilvy. I'm the director of sales for Cellblock FCS. And today we're going to talk about lithium ion batteries and fire safety specifically. A little bit of history on myself. I was uh, on the team that developed the proprietary materials that are used in the products we're going to discuss today. And we primarily focus on five aspects of lithium ion battery safety. And specifically at the, at the cornerstone of, of all of our products is our fire suppression media, Subblock X. This is a specialty mineral that we've developed that extinguishes lithium ion battery fires. It's engineered specifically for this application. So that's the first category is fire suppression and su fire suppression media in the form of cell block X. Number two is the storing, transportation and charging of lithium ion batteries. We have a number of products, including transportation cases and storage and charging cabinets that fit into this category. Number three is packaging, ship shipping and handling of lithium ion batteries. Quite a dubious task indeed, especially if they're damaged and defective batteries. We have uh, a nice range of products uh, and solutions that can solve these problems. We have a special uh, United States DOT special permit 20549 that allows for the shipment of damaged and defective batteries. And that's in our Subblock X uh, suppression media. It's used also as safe packing, so it's it's active and passive fire suppression. So that's the third category. Fourth category is containment covers and extinguishers. We have a number of uh, fire shield uh, textile blankets that are specifically designed for lithium ion batteries. And when you're talking about a lithium ion battery fire thermal runaway or incident, you're normally talking about a very concentrated small area where the, the heat is concentrated into a very small area. Our fire blankets and our textiles are engineered, again, specifically for lithium ion batteries, whereas we have a number of different fire textile architectures that come together uh, to, you know, just in layman's terms, you know, two layer, three layer, four layer. And we have different, different textiles that are performing different functions within that laminate architecture. So that's the fourth, containment covers and extinguishers. Extinguishers being fire suppression pillows, uh, which is, this is an invention of our own that it basically is a way to encapsulate the cell block X fire suppression mineral within a pillow. That you're able to actually um, get the suppression mineral onto the incident and extinguish the fire. 
Number five is our incident kits and emergency response kits. This, this is, was one of our first big tasks as we came to market, where we have our LIBIC uh, incident kit, which is an acronym for the lithium ion battery incident kit. You'll find our LIBIC kits on most major airlines and uh, private, in, private and business airlines. In fact, our team is today out in Las Vegas at the convention center for the business airline aviation show. Uh, with our incident kits. We have FAA approval for these kits, and they're using the same technology um, that's going we're gonna run through in the presentation today. So that's just an overview. I like to point out those five categories of battery safety that we're focused on. We have such a great range of, of products and, and technologies and solutions that these five categories, again, fire suppression media, storing, transportation, and charging, packaging, shipping, and handling, containment covers and extinguishers, incident kits, and emergency response. So with that, let's get into the presentation a little bit, and I really want to explain the technology uh, behind these products and, and our company to you. So with that, we'll move forward. So I believe, unfortunately, today some of the uh, the audio uh, is not playing through on these videos, but I'm going to kind of narrate over the top of it. What you're seeing here is a menage of different um, products coming together to make the cell block product. So different technologies, I should say. So uh, we have um, fire suppression uh, mineral, which is here. That's what you're seeing there. It's the cell block X. That's the cornerstone of what we're doing. The cab are cabinets, our transportation cases all have the cell block X in them as an active uh, fire suppression media. So it's going to deploy. So in, in some cases, you'll you'll see there's products out there that are are um, are meant to contain um, lithium ion batteries, but we're, we're actually extinguishing um, the lithium ion battery fires as we go along here. There's some of our incident kits, the Libet kit you're seeing. But again, it's our cell block X fire suppression mineral in conjunction with our tiles. Our, our fire tiles are very important. So we, this is our other proprietary material. We've developed a, a heat tile specific to lithium ion battery fire containment that can take an incredible amount of, of heat. These tiles uh, are currently deployed in our cabinets and in our transportation cases at a half inch thickness. It's a substrate. And that tile at a half inch thickness can take 2000 degrees F in a direct hit sustained for a half an hour and you won't get a temperature rise of more than 200 degrees on the back side of the tile. So that's that's really key into our contain when we're talking about our containment systems. So we'll go into some other parts of the slide, the presentation now and go through some of the specific products. Risk assessment is a big part of what we do. Um, our two of our founders um, uh, spend a lot of time on regulatory boards and have worked closely with underwriter laboratories, FM Global, and other insurers to do risk assessment and, and see what do you what's out there, what what are the risks, and how can we mitigate the risks. So all of our products are designed to mitigate these risks of lithium-ion battery safety. And you know, in the world we're living in now, more and more things are becoming electrified. The the energy density is going up, and uh, I think the fire safety uh, aspect and, and products really need to follow suit. We do a lot uh, with modular EV batteries, very large batteries, and again, to the point of the energy density in some of these batteries. I received a spreadsheet a couple of weeks ago from a large auto manufacturer detailing out the energy and some of the, the upcoming batteries. Some of these batteries are going to be in excess of 95 kilowatt hours, some of these modules. So you, you've got a, just a lot of energy um, deployed into these batteries. Um, and a couple of the things we're working on is we're, we're using our fire, our, text, our fire textile technology to develop um, auto uh, electric vehicle blankets that could be pulled directly over the top of a, ba a car that's on fire. And also, we're also working on ways to deploy the cell block X material um, directly into these types of um, these types of fires that are out in the field. 
So here we are with Cell Block X. Cell Block X was our key invention. We, my background is in mineral technology, and this Cell Block X is 100% is pure mineral. And I'd like to explain a little bit about how the material is working, because it, this is really the cornerstone of our technology. Cell Block X material is, is a heat phase change material. It's a spherical grain, spherical granulate at a very specific size range. That spherical granulate within that range is able to uptake heat, smoke, and gas. One way to understand how it's doing this is to, if we looked at some one of this, a single grain of cell block X and a single sphere, the area within inside the sphere, the available area is 75% air. So in each and every sphere, and these spheres range between one and four millimeter in size, in, in the area in, inside of each sphere is 75% air. It's a closed cell multicellular structure. That area is available to uptake heat, smoke, and gas. The material is heat stable until 700 C. So from zero to 700 C, the material is completely stable. So it's taking on an incredible amount of heat with no deformation or no changes chemically. So 700 C to 900 C is the softening point. So the material begins to soften at 700 C to 900 C. At 900 C, the material will go molten. And then at 1100 C, this is really where the magic happens, it will carbonize and form a hard shell. So for instance, if, you're, if your laptop uh, is having a thermal runaway and you were to pour cell block X on top of that laptop that was in thermal runaway, and you were to get six inches of embedment. So you've got six inches of cell block X on top of that, that laptop. That's enough to absorb all the heat, smoke, and gas. So while well, a laptop's not gonna get quite to 1100C, but it's still going to be releasing toxins, gas, and heat and smoke. That all of that, if you have enough embedment, and we can do a calculation based on how much energy density is in that battery and what the embedment depth has to be. How much cell block X do you have to have on top of it? And this is how we back into the uh, the fire, how much fire suppression is in our in our cabinets and in our transportation cases. We know how much cell block X it takes to extinguish and to absorb the heat, smoke, and gas from, from a particular battery. But that, let's go back a little bit to to how it's how is that heat, smoke, and gas getting into the grain? So you have a grain that has 75% available air uh, airspace within its its internal area. Well, how is this heat, smoke, and gas getting in there? Good way to understand this is that the cell block X mineral is absorptive to some point. Uh, maybe a good way to understand it is in if you thought about it in terms of water absorption. So um, cell block X will absorb 30% of its weight in water. So if I have 100 pounds of cell block X, it will absorb 30 pounds of water. Well, that's a lot of water. And where is it going? It's going directly into the grains themselves. And that is just a good kind of visual or, or understanding of how, where is the heat, smoke, and gas going? There's, there's very small fissures or cracks in the surface of, of the grain, probably around four to six millimeter uh, micron um, in size. And that's how the water is weeping in. And that's also how the heat, smoke, and gas is, is going to get in. And that's why the embedment depth is important. So if you have enough mass of cell block X, it, it will hold down that pressure. And then the, the upward force of the heat, smoke, and gas will literally push the heat, smoke, and gas into the cell block X. So that's how it's absorbing. A um, couple points on the cell block X. Number one, um, just a cool side point that it's made entirely from post-consumer recycled glass. So this is an engineered material. It's very exacting specifications and standards. You, there are other, there's another mineral out there that's sometimes used in, in batteries, um, transportation called vermiculite. And the difference between cell block and vermiculites are, are extraordinary. So this is, cell block X is, a, is an engineered material. So there, there's, there's consistency in the manufacturing. Um, another incredible point is the spherical grain of the cell block X. It's what we call the ball bearing effect. The, the, the grains will flow. And this is what you want. When you're, when you're introducing a dry fire suppression mineral to a battery uh, incident or a thermal runaway, well, you, you have obviously the geometry of the battery and, and, and you want the material to get where it needs to go, right down there. Well, if you're talking about cell block X, it's spherical in grains in, in, in shape, so it's going to flow where it needs to go. 
where if you're looking at other other minerals or mine minerals, they're angular in shape and they do not promote flow. So that's just a little bit about cell block X. We will get some more questions on this, but I want to move on to to the next slide. So. As our team was developing, we have some incredible people on our team developing the cell block X mineral. At the same time, the same team developed the fire containment panel here that we're seeing here, this substrate. It's, we use the same technology, the same mineral and chemical composition that makes up the dry mineral itself, cell block X, is used to make the fire containment panel. So this panel, again, is incredible. This, this panel can take an, an incredible amount of heat. And one thing I really I like about this is that we're, you know, as I think most of you will know and would acknowledge that, you know, it's kind of a wild, wild west right now with batteries and battery safety. And you're just seeing the, again, the energy density is going up and the technology is just moving very, very fast. We are able to scale as well. So you can see here in this picture, you're seeing our fire containment panel and we, we cast it today almost exclusively at a half inch thickness. And it does works works incredible for all of our products, and it does the job we need it to do today. But as the energy densities go up, and maybe perhaps the the job gets tougher, and and it's and we have to contain more energy, I can just simply cast this panel in a different thickness. I can cast it in three quarters of an inch or one inch. If I double the thickness of this panel, I will literally double the performance. So we're very excited about our technology, where we have the cell block X loose fire suppression mineral that's able to be deployed, absorb heat, smoking gas, extinguish a lithium ion battery fire, allow you to safely transport um, batteries, even damaged and defective. And then we have our fire containment panel that, that used in the right way, in, as you'll see down the line here with our cabinets and cases, is it, this is how we get to full containment. We, we, and I'll talk about this further, in the presentation, can full containment is, is what we, we, we shoot for here when we're talking about our transportation cases and our cabinets. That means that whatever happens inside that cabinet and we get we assign an energy containment rating, an ECR value to each of the cases and cabinets. And we give that value in kilowatt hours. So if we say, for instance, a cabinet can contain 20 kilowatt hours, Containment means that you can have 20 kilowatt hours of batteries completely go off inside of that cabinet and the outside temperature of the cabinet is not going to go above ambient temperature and you will not catch anything else in the building on fire. So that's our standard for full containment and that's the only reason we are able to do that is because of our technology here with our fire containment panels. The next arrow in our quiver that's really important, and the third one is our is our textiles, our the sublock textile technology. Again, the, the fire suppression mineral sublock X proprietary. We invented that ourselves. The uh, the fire containment panels proprietary. We invented it ourselves. If you look at the textiles, well, clearly we didn't invent fireproof textiles, right? That that's that's a commodity. But what we did do is we did take all the existing technologies and we looked at how can how can we bring different textiles together how can the architecture of these these materials come together to to deliver the performance that we need and again when we're talking about performance with lithium ion batteries this is a very it's a lot of heat concentrated in a small area and with a textile like if you were to just try to use a welding blanket or or a, a standard a uh, fire blanket that's on the market. A lithium ion battery, when that that when that concentrated and burst of energy will just blow a hole directly through almost all of those products. But our cell block technology is designed to handle that. We have different layers of these textiles laminated together and engineered to to do the job. One of we'll get to it a little bit further up, but the textiles are in it very important in our Libet kits. Our Libet kits, again, we have FAA approval for, for our Libet kits. And, and what these kits are, are it's an emergency response kit, obviously lithium iron battery incident kit. So it's it's an incident kit. It's meant to address an incident. In this case, there's a fire on the plane. It's a bad, it's a, an electronic device, it's a laptop. And what we have to do is we have to have containment. Just like the cabinets are full containment, the Libic bags offer full containment as well. Of course, on a smaller scale, 
uh, for the task of, again, consumer electronics on an airplane. But when we put that, when that ultra, uh, that device that's, that's having a thermal runaway goes into a Libic bag, it's 100% contained. We're still deploying the cell block X material in the form of the, the extinguishing pillows. The bags will be lined with the extinguishing pillows and we'll have the cell block X there ready to be deployed. But it, it really is these textiles that are doing the heavy lifting and making sure that whatever goes into those bags is fully contained. Again, our fire shield blankets, the, here the slide tells the story, tested up to 2000 degrees for 30 minutes. We have all different sizes of these blankets. We And we, it, with all of our products and all of our solutions, we have a nice range. So we have a 36 by 36 inch fire shield blanket that just has two layers and it's rather inexpensive, three, $400, right? But then we'll have one that's a high watt hour blanket that would have four layers. That would be designed differently for maybe a higher energy. So whatever, whatever type or size of batteries that you're dealing with in your, in your fact, that you can size our products to, for, the, for the right amount of energy that you're trying to hold back. So this is a little bit more about the fire sheet blanket. We'll get into that a little bit further down the line. Here's a quick video on a number of our incident, our incident kits. EDA is electronic device extinguishing kit. Libic, we went through that. Uh, here's some testing on on on, and we the we went through some incredible amount of testing with um, with the FAA and with underwriter laboratories to get approval. And I will just do a little bit of name dropping here, because we are allowed to. Um, every Airbus that comes off the line now, uh, brand new Airbuses will have a Libic in the cockpit and the Libic in the cabin. So that's a pretty good testament to our technology. Uh, as it's been adopted by all the major airlines and all the major air, most of the major uh, manufacturers at this point. And we'll talk, I'll talk a little bit more as we get, get into this is showing the textile, of course, taking the, that incredible heat signature and, and testing the duration. Um, but we'll get into a little bit more on the, uh, and how we're deploying the cell block X within these kits as well. Okay, we could go to the next slide. Excellent. So uh, I want to talk a little bit about our, our cabinets, our, our um, lithium-ion battery storage and charging cabinets. So all of our cabinets, again, are full containment. These cabinets are, are incredibly robust, overly engineered. We are actually putting out the fire within these cabinets. So the cabinets themselves, most of them feature between two and five shelves. Each one of the shelves is is a separate area. So if you lose, if you have an incident, battery incident on shelf number two, you're not going to lose the batteries on shelf one and shelf three. Everything is separated. Each shelf has its own uh, separate uh, fire suppression system where it's going to deploy the cell block X. Um, and of course, these cabinets are lined with the fire tiles, um, fire containment panels. And there's also an airspace all around. Um, we do have some upgrades for these cabinets as well, where if you wanted to do remote monitoring, we have an exhaust monitoring system that can be added on, and we'll get into some of the add-ons that can be, um, that we have down the line. Cabinets, are, we have uh, five standard size models, um, and then the cabinets also um, have pressure relief valves. You can see in the top, uh, top of the doors here in, in, the, in the picture, one thing uh, that's very important is, is pressure mitigation, right? If you're going to have an incident in these cabinets, we can't turn the cabinet into a bomb, right? So we're controlling the air. We know exact where we know exactly how much energy, what is the energy containment rating for that cabinet? We know it. We give the rating for that cabinet. The cabinet we're looking at right there has an energy containment rating of 30 kilowatt hours. So we know based on how much, what the rating is for that particular um, unit. 
we know how many of our pressure relief valves to put in. So these are, they're not just pressure relief, they're also heat diffusers. So you're not gonna get a heat signature coming directly out from these vents. But we all, again, we're, it's mitigating the pressure and it's also filtering any of the toxins and gas that are coming out. So it's letting out air, but uh, it's filtered air. Uh, so you're not letting out um, toxic gases. The cabinets are um, very robust. That You can see here the, uh, the, the, the feet, the, uh, the casters on the bottom are leveling casters. So you can level the units. We offer charging, uh, so you can either get the cabinets for just straight storage, or we can have electrical charging where we typically have a five receptacle strip per shelf so that the cabinets can be um, ordered with charging capabilities as well. And then if that 30 kilowatt hour uh, ECR value is not enough, we do offer a high watt hour upgrade to the shelves. And what that means is we just, we increase the amount of sub block X that's deployable within the, within the unit. So you can actually double the energy containment rating for one of our cabinets by going to the high watt hour shelf um, option. So this cabinet at 30 kilowatt hours could be upgraded with a high watt hour upgrade to go to 60 kilowatt hours. Now there is a little downside uh, space wise associated with doing that. If you um, increase to the high watt hour shelf, we have to put in more fire suppression mineral, which means if the shelf had 12 inches of clearance, now it may only have 10 inches of clearance or head height of freeboard uh, because we just have to put more material in. But that's that's the rundown on the cabinets. Again, they are 100% full containment. If we could go to the next slide. Perfect. So cell block X versus vermiculite. This is a really, really great video. Um, and we just like to show how the performance here. So we have what we have is, is polymer packs. There's three polymer packs on each side. And, and on the left side, we're going to try to extinguish it with vermiculite. And on the right, you're going to see the cell block X deployed. And what you'll see here is what, the speed at which the cell block X completely extinguishes the fire. And you can see the material flowing into place much better, um, and it's completely out. So the performance is, it's not even comparison. There's no comparison really, because the cell block X is engineered specifically to do the job where I think someone just figured out that, hey, if you put a battery in sand or vermiculite, it might not catch on fire. Um, so that's really old technology. Um, the other thing we like to point out here is that cell block X is active and passive fire suppression. So you can just simply use it to store or you can, or if you deploy it, it will actually extinguish the fire. We haven't discussed this yet. So I want to talk a little bit about, if we could pause that video for a second right here so I can talk about this for one moment. So on the right, you're seeing our fire suppression pillows. Uh, th these, we call this the fast approach pillow. It's got a couple handles there, so you can grab it like a shield and you can approach and you can put it on the, uh, the incident. And what happens here is that gray textile is, um, is going to burn away at 400 F. So it's, it's a great material where it's holding and encapsulating the cell block X material. And it's allowing us on the right to deliver, just physically deliver the cell block X to the incident. And on the left, this is how it works in, in the cabinets and in the, in the transport cases. The cell block X is again held back with the textile and then in the ins in deployed simply by gravity, right? So that there's an incident, the heat signature is going to burn that textile away quickly at 400 F and the cell block X then is going to via gravity fall and and embed and encompass whatever is in the case of the cabinet. And again, if it's end, you, we, we know how much material is deployable within that unit. And that's how we get to the rating. So as long as you stay within the rating of the cases and cabinets, uh, you'll know that you have enough cell block X ready to be deployed. The pillows on the right are, are incredibly, uh, they're just incredible how simple it is and how they're working. I'm working with, um, with the fire departments around the country, with Safeware, Safeware and uh, Cellblock have been doing a number of demonstrations with fire departments and um, all around the country uh, and, and taking 
allowing them to have something where it's an, you can actually take the material and, and, and extinguish a fire. So we take this pillow, so I light off the, just the pre, like the previous video we we're watching with the polymer packs. If you light those polymer packs and you just take and you put one of these pillows on top of it, it's immediately out. So we can resume the video now, thank you. So the Cell Block X, uh, again, our products all fit into the five categories that I started out with. Fire suppression media, storing transportation and charging. So the fire suppression media is first on the left. That's the Cell Block X. That's, that's the key to all of our technology. Storing, transporting, and charging. On the right there, this, that, that case you see there on, on the right, it, the picture is not doing it justice in scale. Um, you, you could bury a couple bodies in that case. That's how big it is. So that's for the mining industry. That that that's that's a they have some very very robust batteries that have to go down into the mines where you can imagine you not want a fire in the mine, right? So a lot of energy. And see, we can see here maybe kind of hard to see, but in the and the you can see there's fire suppression pillows hanging around the perimeter on the inside of this box. What that allows us to do is to add some extra suppression material. So we know that there's we we want the energy containment rating or the ECR value to be very high on this case. So one of the ways we do it is we'll line the case. We'll line it with extra suppression panel, uh, pillows, which means that there's extra cell block X ready to be deployed. So that's just one way um, we we add extra material. So on the right, you'll, next uh, on the third one over, you'll see uh, this is is our packaging, shipping, and handling. We have, again, our special permit. Uh, we didn't get into the drums yet. We'll, we'll discuss the drums a little bit more. The, our drums are incredible. They're engineered to, um, we'll, we'll get to, I don't wanna talk exactly about how it's, uh, the engineering is. We'll, we're gonna get to another slide on that. But you can ship damaged and defective batteries in our drums with the cell block X material. And we have a number of solutions that we sell through um, some recyclers around the country to recover and recycle batteries. And then finally, the Libet kit. The Libet kits are um, containment bags, and we've discussed those already. So go to the next slide. So this is a great video of our Libet kits. So again, the Libet bags themselves offer full containment. And to point out the difference, so full containment meaning, you know, that's that's a that's a that's their their um, they're not cheap. These bags have a number of different layers because they are full containment. To that point, each each bag, each Libic has a suppression pillow, a fire shield blanket, a pair of heat gloves, and and very maybe some goggles and uh, masks depending on the different unit. But we also offer our EDE kits. Um, electronic device extinguishing kits and our EHS kits, which have everything that's in the Libet kit, but the bag itself is not containment because you don't need, if you, you know, unless you're on an airline, you, you don't need the bag to be containment. So our EHS kits, um, you know, these range from, you know, $600 to $1,500 roughly, and they have everything that's in the Libet kit, but the bag itself is not containment. So that's a, it's a good example of how we try to have a, a range of products um, for different applications and different companies. So with that, um, I guess we um, don't have a slide on the drums. So I did want to, we could go back to a picture of the drums. I did want to explain our, our drums. Our drums are a really incredible solution. So the drums themselves, so that's showing a 55 gallon drum. We have three sizes of drums. We have a 16 gallon, a 30 gallon, and a 55 gallon. So the, the drum technology is that we have a, there's a perforated steel liner that goes in the drums that stands off the, out, the, the inside of the drum two inches. What that does is that allows for two inches of cell block X to be along the perimeter of the drum and then we also have an eight inch uh, heat reducing uh, vent, uh, pressure relief vent in the drums. Um, and so you can contain an incredible amount of energy in, in these drums and you can also use it to save. So if there's an incident, if you have a damaged and defective battery, they're great for safety procedures. 
if you if you have an incident in, in your factory and where 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 are you going to put the um, damaged battery you can put it in one of our drums either a 16 a 30 or a 55 Build, as long as the drum's filled with cell block X, you can then ship that under our special permit. So the drums are a great solution um, to have on hand in conjunction with a few bags of the cell block X. There now you'll have a way to deal with um, any thermal runaways or any incidents that may occur. Thank you for going back to that. So with that, Heather, I think I could probably open it up to a few questions if we have some. Yeah, you bet, Travis. Thank you. Um, the first question that we have is, is cell block X safe and can it come in, into contact with skin? Yeah, great question, Heather. Cell block X is an inert mineral, so so it's it's basically silicon dioxide. Um, so it is, it is completely safe. Um, you can, you do not have to have gloves on to handle it. Um, and in, in large part, there's less than 3% dust generated from the cell block X because it's a spherical grain. So chemically, it's no problem. It's silicon dioxide. There's nothing hazardous. And also because, and I, and I did mention it's crystalline, it's silica. There is no crystalline silica. So I think that's the, where, where you, when once you know, if you looked at the MSDS and you saw that it was silicon dioxide primarily, it's not crystalline silica. So there's a big difference. Uh, so crystalline silica, um, it is it has a different if you looked at if you looked at any x-ray diffractions of, of silica crystalline silica has very high very steep points in the graft and that and that that's representative of the crystalline structure uh, the cell block X has has rolling bell curves in the same x-ray x-ray um, chart so th there's no crystalline silica is the big takeaway and it is safe you can handle with even without gloves. Great, thank you, Travis. And what what is the shelf life of cell block X? Again, Heather, because there's no there's no um, uh, there's really no measurable shelf life because it's it's a mineral. So um, you could have uh, the same bag of cell block X that you opened today and used. You could literally open it 20 years from now and deploy it because it is a mineral. Uh, and it is completely, completely stable. So uh, again, inert mineral, uh, shelf life, let's call it 20 years, could be 40. Thanks, Travis. And another question that we just received is, is this product currently being used by fire departments? It is, in fact. Um, I just did, um, last month, I did a training for the Fire Department of New York at their Randall Island Fire Training Academy. And the Fire Department of New York uh, is now deploying cell block X on the streets of New York City to to extinguish lithium-ion battery fires, scooters, and other, other PEV um, devices that they're seeing in the city. And also, they'll use it in their drums to safely pack and and store and ship batteries that have been compromised. Uh, it's it's really, really starting to get a lot of uh, momentum in the emergency response world. Thanks for expanding on that. Now, if removed from the runaway material, will the material reignite similar to a combustible metal? Yeah, it certainly will. Um, and that's why the material works so well is that you can you can extinguish with it but say you say you had an incident and you, and you deployed one of the extinguishing pillows and you extinguish the device the battery uh now yeah that battery is compromised and it could continue to go up you have no idea how many cells have been compromised or how many are still waiting to go so the beauty of the material is it, you've extinguished it with the cell block x now you simply pick up the battery or the scooter whatever it is you could put it into one of our drums, you could put it into a dumpster, you could put it anywhere, as long as then you cover it and embed it in the cell block X, uh, then if it goes off again, uh, it's safe. So you, you have to have, you know, it's nice to have some sort of containment vessel, whether it be a drum, uh, some sort of a metal box or something. And as long as that's, it, you fill it and, and you have a good enough embedment, um, you know, typically, you know, six to 12 inches, or, you know, if you took a, if you took a scooter battery and put it in one of our 55 gallon drums full of cell block X and put the lid on it, uh, it's safe. 
So, um, yep, these things will continue to go off. And that's why our material is perfect, because you're going to just use it as packing peanuts and it will be safe. Thanks, Travis. And we have another question here from a major city fire department, and that is, for use in an emergency scene, such as an electric car fire, are you developing systems to get the cell block onto the source of the fire from a distance, or should fire departments use water to, to extinguish and then allow the responder to get close enough um, to pour the cell block onto the battery? What are your thoughts? Yeah, that that's a that's a really good way to go about it. You know, as far as you know, how how do you do it in the field? You know, the, all the water is going to do, uh, and and it is important. And the water will knock down the flames and the heat, which will would allow the you know somebody to get closer to put the cell block X on it. So we have some very large extinguishing pillows that the, that the fire firefighter can bring in there. So correct, that's a great procedure. You knock the, knock the heat signature down, knock the flame down. Allow somebody to get close. Once you get that, once you get that uh, that pillow, extinguishing pillow, on top of it, it's game over. Then it'll put it out. It's very interesting because you know this kind of wasn't there. There really wasn't anything like this or any tool like this for fire departments. I don't know if 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 the group has heard. I think it was uh, sometime in July. It was this summer. There was a huge lithium ion battery uh, fire outside of Chicago where an entire warehouse of batteries went up. And and the, the the fire chief was interviewed by the, the local news news station, and he basically said we had nothing to extinguish this fire. The water wouldn't work, and the foam wouldn't work. This is exact. These are his words. And so the only thing he could do was pull a 200-yard perimeter and watch the building burn to the ground. But that has its own challenges. Now you're having uh, toxic, you know, smoke and gas. He probably had to push that perimeter out a little bit. But um, our material, you know, can actually extinguish the fire. So we are working right now to develop systems to pump or 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 disperse the material from a distance. Material is very very lightweight, so it's 14 pounds a cubic foot. You can you can you can with a diaphragm pump you can pump and you can shoot the cell block X quite a distance. Uh, so these are things we're working on as we speak um and but we're seeing departments and we're seeing um mainly fire departments really kind of taking the reins on this and they're figuring their own way to to address it and and the first thing that we do have available right now is the fire suppression pillows and then we also have our our fire shield blankets but when we're talking i like to talk specifically about extinguishing the fire you know there 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 are some ways to to cover it once it's out, but you, you know you have to put it out first. So, um, yeah. To answer, your, the, oh, sorry about the long-winded answer, but um, yeah, hitting it with water to allow the firefighter to get close to get the pillow deployed is is what we're doing today. Hopefully, you know by Q1 of 2022, we have you know a pumping system where you can just stand back and pump it. No, thank you for. I thought that was a great uh, conversation about it. Now, moving yep. on to talk about drums a little bit. Um, do the cell block line drums have pressure relief functionality built in? They do, and I apologize that, that the picture we saw on the slideshow didn't show the, the vent. So we, we used to, in our Gen 1 drums, we had the pressure relief in the lid. Our Gen 2 drums now have 8-inch um, pressure relief built directly into the side of it. So. There's some standoff plates that allow, that allow the, the, the pressure to release, the air to release. But again, in our drums, everything's filtered through the cell block X. So you have two inches of cell block X around the perimeter. There's a perforated liner. So it, everything has to get gets forced through the perforated, perforated liner, filtered by the cell block X, and then out of the drum. So one of the innovations um, uh, is, is to have this larger event. And we'll get into... Um, you know a little bit more about how, how much uh, energy these these drums can contain but um you are also using the cell block x as loose fill within the drum so i hope that answered the question yeah it does thank you and further along along the lines of the drums and even the boxes um can the drums or boxes be reused after they've been used yeah, we get that question a lot. So um, absolutely, because uh, 
back to how I discussed earlier on the cabinet, if you had an incident on shelf two, you're not going to lose anything on shelves one and shelf three. The fire containment tiles and panels are specific to a shelf. So if you have an incident and you, there's a thermal runaway on shelf two, we lose all the batteries, the whole thing goes up, um, but everything's going to be contained to that. So you're going to lose everything on shelf one. You're, you're, you're going to, you're going to, damage the tiles to some extent where you know they're they're going to still be intact but you know you you wouldn't they'll be uh, charred and you, and you you wouldn't want to reuse them but all we'd have to do in that incident and of course the cell block x would have been deployed from the from the shelf above all we would do is recharge the cell block x in in the uh in the shelf above and we would replace the tiles and these are th this is a very easy fix so you know um with less than less than a day's work that cabinet can be put back into service. We know the parts, we, the, the, the replacement parts, the new deployment lid can be shipped out. The new replacement tiles can be shipped out. These things can be refitted in and that, that cabinet can go right back into service within days of the incident. Thank you, Travis. And what are, or what is the max watt hours allowed per battery under cell block DOT special permit 20549. Excellent, this is, a, this is a, another good question. So currently right now, we sit at 300 watt hours per battery. And I wanna point out that this is our, this is our DOT special permit. This was our original special permit 20549. We, are, we have applied for and I'm expecting an upgrade to this permit. We, we should see that upgrade literally um probably definitely before the end of q3 and the upgrade will go to 1000 watt hours so right now it's 300 watt hours um and that's because the original our original drums had the pressure relief in the in the lid we've had we've just finished our testing this summer with the new eight inch uh pressure relief and, and this can contain an incredible amount of energy, way more than the original Gen 1 drums. So the permit as it stands today is the rule is 300 watt hours uh, per battery. Now that doesn't, that you could put 10 batteries into the drum and still ship under the permit. You just can't have a single battery that has more than 300 watt hours. It's also to point out that, so that's DOT for road transportation. If we're talking about sea transportation, it goes down a little bit. For sea transportation, the allowable marine spec is for 100 watt hours per battery. So uh, again, we expect that we're going to have an increase from 300 watt hours to 1,000 watt hours. And you can co-mingle batteries together. Uh, this is another big point. You don't have to, uh, you know, they can be co-mingled. Um, and again, 300 watt hours is a per battery spec. So you can, it's not, you can put multiple batteries in just as long as you don't exceed that, that amount of energy. Great, thank you. Um, regarding PPE, um, personal protective equipment for firefighters, what recommendations do you guys have when uh, using this material? So for PPE, we have, um, we have our our uh, we have our heat gloves, which are engineered specifically for lithium ion batteries. Um, so these are a little bit better. These are going to take a, a much much greater heat signature than standard um, firefighting gloves. So we focus on our gloves. Um, that that's the main thing uh, we we do. Our lithium ion battery incident kits have the gloves in them, um, and so. That, that is our main, when it comes to PPE, that, that's our focus is specifically on the gloves. And, and we're focused on that because we need, we need that to be part of the incident kit. So our incident kits are meant to have everything on board that you need to address a fire. So the ED kit, uh, the EHS kits rather. So these things work just like a, a first aid kit. Uh, so you, you have it, it the, it's mounted on the wall um, at the factory or the facility. If there's an incident, they open up the bag, they put the gloves on, they grab the suppression pillow, they throw that on the incident, you take the fire blanket that's in the kit, you put that over the whole shooting match. Then if you have one of our drums, you pick the thing up and you put it in the drum with the cell block X. And that's a complete procedure to handle a lithium ion battery fire. And in fact, one that's that doesn't cost that much money. I mean, you're talking to, to get one of our drums couple bags of our X and one of our EHS kits, 
you know, you're talking well under three thousand dollars, and and you've got everything you need to to address an incident, and you've got everything you need after the incident to safely put the battery away, so you know when you shut the lights off and go home at night that it's completely contained. And then the next day, you can slap our DOT sticker on it and ship it out of your building. So that I mean, we that's a really I mean, that's a nice array of solutions for a pretty short amount of money, in my opinion. Yeah, you bet. Now, I understand that there are a couple more slides that we have that we could address some of these questions that we're receiving. Um, and I yep. think this has been a great dialogue so far. Um, so why don't we go on to the next slide and then continue on with the lecture? Sure. So um, transportation cases, our transportation cases is what we're, we're seeing here. Our transportation cases are, again, using the same exact technology of a cell block X fire suppression mineral, deployable and ready to go, active suppression in the lid of these transportation cases. Then you have, again, our tile lining the cases. And then our, the craft, you know, the, the metal work and the craftsmanship and and it all comes together to deliver an incredible robust product. We've built, we've developed some specific module cases for the military. Um, we've got module cases we've developed specifically as you saw for the mining industry for EVs. But as far as let's talk a little bit about about the transportation cases and and. Um, what can you expect if you buy one of our transport cases? Again, we have all different sizes to accommodate. You'll find that you'll you'll find one of our stock cases that are suitable likely for your size of battery. What we say if you're buying our transportation cases, and I'll use the example of an EV manufacturer uh, that, that has our system in place. So they have a main facility based in the United States, their, their main um, manufacturing facility. And, but then they have their dealerships all around the country. Well, if they want to get a damaged battery, um, ship a battery either out to the distributor or get a damaged battery back from the distributor, they have a couple of our transport cases sitting and waiting. So what they'll do is they'll ship the case to the distributor, the distributor puts the battery into the case and it ships, ships it back. We consider that one domestic round trip shipment. So one domestic round trip shipment um that's what i've just explained there we certify the transportation cases for 25 domestic round trip shipments so that's that's the factory spec that's what they're engineered for you know that's a lot a lot of road time and there you can see here from the picture they're very robust so 25 domestic round trip shipments we have a procedure where after every five domestic round trip shipments there's an inspection procedure that you go through you basically just making sure that the sub block x uh fabric hasn't uh been ripped and that it's ready to be deployed and that there's no cracks or damage to the tiles very easy inspection very rarely is there any incident and again if there is an incident say they drop this thing off a truck and they cracked one of the tiles you just replace the tile it's not that big of a deal so um it, it's important i think if you're going to buy your transportation case you know to know how, how much use am i going to get out of this case so Again, our, they're factory certified for 25 domestic round trip shipments. And that, that inspection procedure after every five is something that can we train you to do that internally. Uh, in fact, most of the replacements, uh, if there is, we've had a couple incidents and we've replaced and repaired the cabinets, uh, and in most instances, the, uh, the, the customer is able to do that themselves. That's, a, that's really how simple it is. Um, yeah, this was an incredibly horrible story where um, charging cell phones uh, caught fire below deck and 34 people were killed. Um, so we're focused on marine safety big time. We're going to be at the workboat show in New Orleans in December and our, our cases, our, our storage case, uh, our transport cases also can have charging functionality. Uh, we have some specifically designed for the marine world where instead of having casters, they have D-rings so they can be bolted down to the ships. So you can only imagine how important it is to have, you know, safe charging, safe storing of lithium-ion batteries in the marine world. 
fact, uh, one of the groups in the U.S. Navy, and I can't get into any more specifics than that, operates a drone program. And so they have uh, our cabinet, they have the cell block uh, cabinets, um, they have one cabinet on base where they keep all of the batteries for the drones. And then when they go to do their missions, or um, they take two of our cases and they put the batteries into the transport cases, take them on the ships, do their operations. So when they're out, out of their base and, the, and in the field, they're using cell block transport, uh, transport cases to safely bring those batteries on board a vessel. And when they bring them back to the base, they go into the cabinets for safe storing and charging on site. So, you know, I think if it's good enough for the U.S. military, I think it's probably pretty well vetted at this point. Yeah, this is our really cool. This is our 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 our, our fearless leader, Matthew Vandemark, our founder, um, developed this case specifically for one of his uh, one of his buddies that has um, a whole fleet of yachts. And so that's why we have the bird's eye maple veneer. Uh, but the functionality is there. The functionality is the same. That case is lined, that 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 stateroom case is lined uh, with the fire containment panel. You can see there's some textile additionally lining it. And then there's cell block X deployed in the lid. And that's a charging cabinet. So uh, really, really cool item. And sometimes, you know, everything we make doesn't isn't doesn't have to be incredibly big. So these things are these things are designed for consumer electronics, personal electronics, um, and it's just a safe, you know, if you have a $4 million yacht, you know, you may as well spend a couple grand to have safe charging for the batteries, right? Yeah, and additional marine protections here. These are, this is a great uh, visual here. So th these, this is the EHS kit I was talking to you earlier that basically mounts on the wall um and it's just right there ready for an incident you can see there's a pair of gloves there's a fire suppression pillow and then there's um a fire shield blanket everything you need to address um an incident you can you're actually extinguishing it you're act then you're covering it up you're able to pick it up and then again i would suggest at the end of the line here having one of our drums as a safe place to put the battery after there's an incident and again you can ship it with one of the drums as well Ah, this is one of our next uh, developments we're working on. In fact, I've been uh, largely heavily involved in this myself. So that's showing you a Tesla power wall. And so we're using our cabinet technology and the fire suppression deployment uh, to make an enclosure for ES ESS systems. E energy storage systems are, are really something you're going to start to see more and more of. The Tesla power wall is, is out there uh, as one you may have heard of. Uh, Generac uh, has one um, now. Um, all the Kohler, all the big um, generator companies are coming with these. Uh, there's a lot of energy involved in these things, and 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 there's not a lot of specifications on how to deal with it. Um, the National Fire Protection Association has put out a standard recently called 855. Um, it's trying to put some definition around how to, how to how to um, address these ESS systems. Um, I will say that I don't think they're, they're far enough with the standard yet, because they're still telling you to extinguish it with water, which we know uh, does not completely extinguish a lithium ion battery fire. But we have, um, again, you're, what you're seeing is an enclosure for an ESS system that has cell block X deployed in the, in the hood, in the lid, gravity deployed, and then you have full containment with the pot, with the tiles. So I appreciate everyone's time today. Sorry to be so windy. Hopefully, maybe Heather, we have time for a few more questions. Yeah, thank you, Travis. Um, you certainly shared a wealth of knowledge and I, I love the questions that we've received um, already so far. So we do have time for just a couple more questions and a few came in. And the first one is, um, can we actually purchase Cell Block X and use it without our own drums and disbursement systems. Absolutely, Safeware sells the Cell Block X in in small bags, which are two cubic foot bags, and then they also sell it in super sacks. Some of, some of the fire departments will take super sacks of the material 
Uh, they already have hazmat uh, trucks set up and they typically already have hazmat drums. So you absolutely can either just take the cell block X into the, 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 the fire department standard hazmat drums and use it again. It's an active and passive fire suppression mineral can de be deployed in any way, shape or form. Doesn't always have to, you don't always have to have our corresponding or supplementary products. You can just buy the material on, on its own and use it. Great, thank you, Travis. And the last question we have is, if somebody has a follow-up question for you, it, should they reach out to you via this phone number on the screen, or would you like us to share it with them in a in an email? Yeah, they, they of course, you know, re reach out to the, say, the on the screen here, go directly to info at Safeware Inc. They can loop me into any conversation, and um, I'm your technical resource. Um, so yeah, they've got the proper contact information there. Wonderful. Thank you, Travis. And this wraps up our webinar today. Um, Travis, do you have any closing remarks you'd like to share before we sign off? I just wanted to thank everybody for their time and just want everybody to know that, you know, we're we're a company based in the U.S., just outside of Portland, Maine. We make all of our materials here in the U.S. We're stitching all these textiles. Uh, we have um, an army of, of stitchers and welders and you know, this is all made in the USA and we're all hard workers and we're, we're very excited to, to bring these products to the market. And again, any questions, bring them to me after the fact and we're very excited to, uh, to help out any way we can. Great, thank you. And thank you everyone for your participation and attendance today. This concludes our webinar. We will be in touch with you within the next 24 hours with your certificate of completion and also a link to the webinar recording. So that way you could watch it again, share it with others in your agencies. Uh, we certainly encourage that. Have a great day, everybody. Stay safe and stay healthy. Bye-bye.